morning. It's Thursday, May 20th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Out of the Dust, and our scripture is Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. You've heard, perhaps many times, the words of Adam and Eve's punishment after their sin in the Garden of Eden. It's recorded in Genesis chapter 3. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. This was, of course, God speaking the awful words of consequence following humankind's disobedience. And thus the die was cast, that we all follow the same path, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We hear those words at funerals. There's nothing so sobering and thought-provoking, primarily because it brings our own human frailty into full view. The statistic on mortality has always been one birth equals one death separated by a few years. There's nothing quite so disturbing and humbling as seeing a friend or family member with whom you spent time, joy, laughter, toil, and tears lying lifeless, unmoving in the casket before you, devoid of spirit, just a shell of dust. The hushed whispers of gathered mourners adds to the surreal otherworldliness of such moments. Frankly, it makes the hair on the back of one's neck stand up rigid. Or it should. But the problem with such scenes isn't the hushed whispers or the weak attempts to frame a maudlin, creepish moment with funny stories of better times. Our dilemma facing the funeral beer is that we spend too much thought on the dust and not enough on what's missing from the dust. When God created humans from dust into man's body and then bone to woman's body, the only things visible were flesh, bone, and blood, reformed dust. And we tend to trust our senses, and so we recognize each other first by the physicality of our being. But notice, Scripture declares that Adam did not become a man nor Eve a woman until God breathed the breath of life into them. It is the gift of God that transforms dust into being. And without that, we're but piles of dust waiting for the vacuum cleaner. We are unknowing, unmoving, unthinking, and unbeing. Considering that unmitigated fact, isn't it rather odd that we invest so much in developing and maintaining our physical or our dustly bodies and so little in the growth of spirit? Many families spend a thousand dollars or more a month on health insurance, and if they give it all, find it hard to let go of a ten dollar bill to the offering plate. We work out an hour a day with Nordic Track, but pray only when trouble hits. We spend time in intense psychotherapy with the counselor, but can't find ten minutes a day with the wonderful counselor. For you today, whenever I find my priorities a little out of order, I call a time out, and I call a family meeting of me, myself, and I to the table and do a little taking stock of where I went off the track. And the meeting always ends the same. Repentance instead of excuses, and prayer for God's strength to get this dusty pilgrim back on track with the spirit God breathed into me. Is it time for your family reunion of dust and spirit? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.